Hello, this is Mike with You Can Do It Too, and we're back on Project Rowdy. Now today we're going to try and get the we're going to work on the driver's side of this tub, working on the inside and this outside to try and get the whole thing in epoxy primer, so we can protect this metal. Now between the last video and this video, I've actually done it's been cut several months, and I've actually done a lot of off-camera metal work. So one of the first things I'm going to do is kind of go over and show you all the little areas that I've, I've uh, cut out metal, made patches, and kind of welded that back in, and then ultimately uh, finished it up with some fiberglass. I'll go through that as well. But before I even do that, I uh, just want to make an announcement that at the very end of this video, for those of my longtime followers and anyone that's, that's following along, um, I'm going to go over probably the next couple of videos, might not be from Project Rowdy, but actually another little project that I've got and a couple more exciting uh, announcements. So I hope you stick around for that. Um, but let me, let me now take you down and we're going to walk you around and show you some of this metal work. All right, start with on this driver's back corner. This lower little section down here, um, the, the paint had some bubbles out and it, it was starting to delaminate and a lot of rust. So I, as I ground it down, I realized it needed a bunch of work. So I ended up cutting a section out. It comes like this and over and down. And so that's all new metal right there and it's been blended in. As well as this up in here, this was actually a lot of, uh, it, it had been hit in the back. So this was a little bit cattywampus. And um, so I panel beat this as much as I could. And then went in, and since I had the uh, fiberglass out, when it did a fiberglass, it's still not quite smooth. It's going to get one after the epoxy primer. It'll get one more layer of um, real thin layer of body filler, and then we'll get that super smooth. So that was one section. There was another section down here in this corner. This little section had to be replaced. Got that pushed back in. And then up here, this is where the... Um, the back of the roll bar comes and you know water runs down that roll bar and gets up underneath between the two pieces of metal the back the bottom flange of the roll bar as well as this and it just rusted this out really bad so i ended up taking a whole section out here it was you know 16 by 10 or something like that and got this whole thing um you know new hole cut in there and all that rolled down and got that put back in there nice um and then let's go around to the side over here, this had a lot of issues, um, so we got that all panel beat and uh, worked out as well. Uh, coming forward, we did that patch, you know, the bottom of the A pillar on the inside, this rust out real bad. I already got a video, complete video doing that, so we did that earlier. And this tub had a really big problem up here on, you know, this is the, the cowl, and I, I'm not really sure what to call this piece. It's kind of like where the A pillar is. Maybe this is the upper cow and the lower cow is what I guess I'll call it for reference in this video. But where these two pieces came to come together, this piece actually goes down and then J hooks back around. And I'll show you the details of that in a second. And, and this piece goes over and down, follows that. And these two get sandwiched and uh, spot welded all the way across. Well, this had, it had, they, they done, the previous owner had done some work and it had some Bondo in here. And the Bondo had cracked, and I'd always gotten a lot of water behind my dash, like on top of my radio. It actually made one of my radios go bad a long time ago. So I wanted to definitely work on this area. So I ended up kind of grinding this out and looking at what it is, and it was there was just rust all, all across here. So I ended up cutting out about uh, three quarters of an inch this direction from about here. Yeah, about right here quite a ways over there, maybe 12 inches from the other end, actually about right here it looks like, and um, you know, quarter, uh, three quarters of an inch this direction, three quarters of an inch or a quarter inch up this column here, and then I took a piece of regular sheet metal and I bent it um, from here and here, it's not quite 90 degrees, a little bit open from 90. I got that thing uh, opened up or uh, got a patch piece bent for that, then I bought one of those shrinker stretchers. And I was able to stretch across this top section of, of the patch to get this thing to curve and actually match this shape perfectly. And then got that piece pushed up from the inside and got it welded across in here and then basically uh, put a, another filler piece in there, welded that in. And then basically put, this is a, uh, uh, underneath here is a short strain fiberglass. And then I did put a, a very thin layer of um, body filler here to get this really feathered out. So this is all nice. I gotta sand all this. Now, interestingly, I've been, I'd sanded this this whole section, the, the driver section, 
a long time ago and ready to paint and I found a I found a, a bad area so I ended up having to fix that area and then just life happens and and uh, didn't get back to it in time enough to, to spray the epoxy primer and then the the uh, the flash rust came in so then you end up um, sanding the whole thing again I think this inside of this firewall I've sanded three times this will be the fourth time that I sanded it let me show you the uh, underside of this just to show you what this now looks like and I'll show you over on this section with that little J what the what the original um, joint did look like and what it looks like now all right here's a look underneath and uh, basically the steering column comes right in here You're, the camera is sitting about where the base of the driver's seat is and I actually misspoke a minute ago the this lower cowl section it comes forward and then comes down and j-hooks around like this creating a little I'm assuming a little water channel to catch any type of water for some reason that would get in this area through some holes or something and run it down <laughs> right down the a pillar where all these jeeps have problems but uh, so this lower cow it has this little J hook and then the the upper cow or the whatever this upper frame piece is it just comes down sits down in it and then is spot welded during the fa at the factory to, to make these joints but you can see you know at this some section right over here I cut mine out and this is where I cut that section out and here's that piece that I bent um, I stretched this top section so that this thing had this slight curve it matched it absolutely perfectly I did go ahead and weld this uh, all the way across and then this is what you can see on here now is seam sealer um, I wanted to make this sure this thing does not leak so the seam sealer on the front side and the back side of this joint and uh, then we got all that fixed so that's how I patched that I would love to know if you're a Jeep owner if uh, you know, I know that everyone everyone has problems with the uh, the bottom of the A pillars. Those just the water accumulates there from either having your top off or whatever, <clears throat> or uh, just water getting in and sitting in your front wheel um, floorboards. That uh, it goes to those A pillars and gets behind there and just rusts those out. But I'd be curious if this is more common. I, I've never heard of this. And actually, when I first spotted it, I'm I really shook my head for quite a while whether what I wanted to do, but. Um, uh, let me take you over and go across here. I went all the way across and actually starting to see where I started a new section there. It just helped me bend it a little easier, but I went all the way over um, almost to the end. Just, just I, What I was trying to do is create a very strong joint and then I knew that um, I could use seam sealer and stuff like that to make it a, a, a waterproof joint. Um, but that, that's going to be super strong now and really fix that as an issue for this Jeep. All right, I just found another reason why water might be getting underneath my dash or actually into my floorboards. And it's actually, a, it was a factory issue. And it's the way the joint is made between this lower cow and my firewall. The firewall comes up and comes out and goes up and creates this little lip. And the cow comes over, comes down, and then just comes over and meets that lip. And that's where it ends. It ends in this joint that's kind of up in this corner right in here. And, um... 
I've been removing some factory installed seam sealer in this joint and I'm going to show you where uh, just two places on mine where the seam sealer actually got into this in this area but didn't even make it over into the area where the joint was and and you know this is where the, the hood comes here and ends so any rain that hits the hood is going to run back fall into this joint it's going to run through this little trough and hopefully come down this little gutter and uh, and get down to the ground but um, you know if all that rain is getting into this gutter and this gutter is not secure and, and, and watertight you know water get in there come go back and it actually gets inside the vehicle and that's that could be a source of a lot of uh, you know reason the apellers are, are going out is we're just getting access water you don't even realize you're getting so uh, let me zoom in up a little ways I'm going to show you where you know the bead you'll see a bead of seam sealer over in this corner which does no good it needs to be over in this corner so let me show you that so here's a close-up look at this uh, area that's a problem area again this is a factory issue because when I pulled back the seam sealer I'm down on uh, basically bare metal. So this was ha this happened at the factory, and it was only in this corner, uh, the back corner, which is you know solid metal, and it did not get anywhere in this this the the front edge, which is where this physical seam really is. Nothing was protecting that seam, and this is this is a good uh, nine inches, ten inches, probably ten inches. And uh, it happened here as well as a little bit that way. There was another little section about four inches long. So any rain coming off my hood was coming in here and getting right into that gap, going into my cabin. And that that ultimately then goes over to the A, a pillars, and that's why those typically rot out. So anyway, if you've got a CJ, YJ, XJ, any kind of a Jeep <coughs> that has uh, this type of a setup, I'm imagining this is very, very um, common on how they they joined uh, this this lower cow in the firewall so um, that'd be something I would check just to make sure that seam and your gutter is got plenty of seam sealer something you could definitely add even even uh, without any, any painting just just put some seam sealer in this thing make sure that joint is, is super watertight and that's gonna help keep water out all right with all that sanding done I now have it all masked off getting ready to spray I've already cleaned up the shop twice but I'm gonna one more last time I'm gonna I'm gonna go up and blow off with compressed air blow off the ceiling and I'll blow out the Jeep then I'll blow off the floor get all that stuff outside and then uh, let the fans kind of blow that anything stuck still in the air let the fans suck that out for a while and then uh, and then we'll get in there and start mixing some primer now a couple things that I think about I'm not sure anyone else but you know, I don't have the, a perfect spray booth here to do this in, but realistically, I'm not looking for this coat. I'm not looking for something that's uh, absolutely perfect. The inside of this Jeep's ultimately going to get like a bed liner, and so it's going to be textured anyway. So if you get a little trash or something like that in the, in the primer there, it doesn't matter at all. The outside, I sure would like to have it as clean as possible, but it's got a lot of work left done on it. It's just This is just a, kind of a preliminary step for it, so... Not a big issue there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this, but uh, let me get it all kind of blown out, cleaned up, and then I'll bring you back uh, when we start mixing primer. All right, we got the room cleaned up and everything blown out, and then I went with uh, some wax and grease remover and cleaned it. I use this prep all. I, I would love to know, I don't, I don't have much experience doing this. Uh, I'd love to know if other people use this. To me, it seems to leave like a little bit of a film, which scares me. I, I always have a problem with Think I'm not getting good adhesion so um, if you have any opinion on that I'd love to know about it uh, but anyway that's what I use kind of wiped it till I got it clean but anyway so um, primer today is gonna be epoxy primer by Eastwood uh, it's a one-to-one -one relationship mixing ratio is one part primer one part uh, catalyst we've got uh, and then you got an immediate uh, there's no induction time so you can as soon as you get it mixed you can spray it uh, you can add reducer if you'd like. It's got a pot life of 90 minutes. Um, I've got a 1.5 tip in my gun. Here I got a note that I spray between 25 and 30 psi at the gun inlet. That'd be at the little valve that I gauge that I've got there. Um, 30 minute flash time between coats, uh, and then some sanding stuff like that. We're not gonna get into that. So, all right. So I'm gonna mix up some, and I'm gonna try. You know, we got a lot to do, and we're gonna do two coats. Um, we can use this thing. It's got a one-to-one -one 
mix here. But I think I'm going to need, that's only going to give me about 14, a little over 14 ounces. It's got an ounce thing on here, and here's 16. If it's one to one, if I do eight of the primer and, and then up to 16 on the catalyst, I'm going to be perfect. So let's see what kind of mess we can get into getting that mixed. All right, here we go.
Well, I ended up running out on um, that six, first 16 ounces. I ran out, so I came back in, mixed up another 16 ounces, and finished uh, that first coat. And I've got about it used up about half of it, so that's another eight ounces. So that first that first uh, coat took 16 plus eight is about 24 ounces. I think that's a lot of a lot of primer. I might be putting on too heavy, but what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and start with this half tub and go as far as it'll go then I'll come back in and just go ahead and mix another 16 ounces if I got two to four ounces left over I'm okay with that but uh, that's how we'll gauge this second we'll be able to dial in pretty close on this second coat so let's give it a I finished at 744 I'm gonna give it a 30 minute flash time probably 40 minute and then uh, we'll start spraying again. well we're all done that's the second coat uh, the battery ran out on the camera so I didn't show you into that video but uh, we got it all done. I think it turned out really well. There's some things I like about this primer and things I don't. Um, what I like about it is when it does finally really cure out, it's super hard. And I think that makes it very durable. What I don't like, and you could probably see right there, is where bare me the difference between bare metal and, in this case, that would be fiberglass, uh, the short strand fiberglass. I mean, you can clearly see the differences now. You know, that's going to be scuffed up and, and it's going to get a high build primer back on top of that. So I think it's finally going to just show. So I don't know if it's supposed to completely, you know, take all that out or not. But uh, not that worried about it. Again, um, inside of this tub is going to get uh, like a truck bed liner of some sort. And so is the bottom of the tub. And then this outside is going to get a lot of, you know, high build primer and then some paint. But well, that feels fantastic to get that done. I've been wanting to have that completed for a really long time, but a lot of things have happened over the past year that just not allow me to physically get that done. So feels super good. But after really inspecting that finish really closely, there's a lot of small dust trash scattered over everything. I, I think I know what it is, but I, I just think that my I, I'm just not going to be able to create an environment that's going to be kind of a trash free to do the final paint on this vehicle and so that is something i'm probably going to do one a couple of things either reach out to another youtuber that's nearby and see if there if there's any kind of collaboration they want to do um would be one opportunity another would be to find maybe find a paint shop that'll rent their booth to me let me come in and paint it myself and if worst case i'll just pay someone to paint it i've got no problems on the paint part of it um there's just sometimes some things you, you can't do, and I, and I don't want to get a, a subpar paint job on the Jeep uh, after doing all this work. So anyway, we'll get that stuff done. I'm still planning on doing the bed liner on the inside of the tub and the underneath side of the tub all myself, so we'll, we'll be, still be doing that, but we'll get that uh, that all worked out on the when it comes time to it. Uh, but we've got some big news, big announcements, I guess. Uh, first of all, my oldest son is getting married. He got engaged and they're gonna get married in about four to five months. And one of the things that him and his fiance have asked is if they could ride away from the wedding in the mistress. The mistress, what's the mistress? I've shown the mistress on this channel before in a little cameo appearance. The mistress is a 1968 Chevrolet Camaro that I've owned for about 11 years. And um, just and I've I drove it here and there quite a bit at the first about four years ago though I had to put it away because it had a pretty big leak in the gas tank when I'd filled it up it leaked out so put it away haven't driven it four or five years so we've got to we got to do a lot to do some work to get that thing ready and, and safe it's already got brand new brakes all the way around but um, so I think what I'm going to do is take a little break from Project Rowdy we're going to jump over and I got four or five little things that I want to do to that car to get it where it looks super nice and they'll be able to drive away and be pretty happy. Um, the first thing is gonna be a gas tank swap to get rid of the, the leaky gas tank. Now, that typically could be very easy, but that's gonna be a pretty difficult, pretty, uh, it's gonna be some take some engineering because I'm gonna buy a gas tank that's gonna serve that car for the next 20, 40, 50 years and it's not gonna include the current engine. So it's gonna, it's a change of a gas tank. So I gotta do some little bit of engineering to kind of marry those two back together. We'll get more detail in the in the video. Probably another video will be on a, a rear spoiler. We're gonna go and uh, find and drill and, and mount a rear spoiler on it because ultimately it's gonna have a rear spoiler as well as a front spoiler. We're gonna put a front, uh, the little chin spoiler on the front. We'll get that mounted. 
Uh, so there's three projects. And then another thing I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, um, is go ahead and do uh, adjust the valves, put new uh, valve cover gaskets, and there's some side covers. I think they may be called push rod cover gaskets or something like that. You know, just get get all the gaskets so it doesn't leak. It doesn't really leak now, but when I open that stuff up, it will. So anyway, I do want it to get the engine run as smooth as it can, and we'll do that project as well. And then ultimately, I also want to get uh, put a new set of wheels. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put some rally wheels on it for quite a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy some rally wheels and get those on there. Right now, it's got some of the old uh, dog dish hubcaps, but again, 1968 Camaro. It's got the straight six. It's a 250. It's got the manual transmission. And it's, I call it the grandma edition. The only upgrade from base stock bottom line is if it had the straight six 230 engine. So anyway, the reason I bought it 11 years ago because it was physically all there. You know, all the trim pieces are there and everything's there. So if I can, I will, as I take things apart, I learn how things work and how they all go back together. And, and so by having a complete car and be able to tear it down, I learned so much and then build it back up and uh, allows me to, to build it back up. Um, so anyway, we're, we're excited. And really the that Camaro project where I want to do a really fine job on it is the kind of the reason we're doing Project Rowdy. Project Rowdy is kind of like a test run. It's where we're, we're trying to define and build our skills to, uh, to do a, a good enough job to now tackle this 1968 Camaro. And probably it might even be more something I do after I physically retire from my day job. But uh, anyway, uh, thought I would announce that probably the next three four videos something like that four or five videos will probably be uh, mistress videos Camaro videos um, But meanwhile while we're taking little breaks on that there's some things and I want I want this Primer to actually cure pretty hard before I um, take that off and and then just so you know the next thing that we'll be doing on project rowdy is uh, we'll be taking the tub off the frame probably building a rotisserie frame a little bit different than what you're used to not something metal and rotates but actually a wood framing that goes on the front and the back that you can just roll it up, roll it down. Something I saw on another YouTube channel that I've been following a long time, that, that channel name is uh, Jev Chance. Uh, the gentleman there was, was building a, and restoring an old, Camar uh, an old Mustang. And uh, he built this little frame structure. I thought, wow, that's, that's something that's uh, kind of right up my alley. My, my background really a long time ago was on wood wood. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little piece. It's great. I'm glad to be kind of back and uh, kind of working on Rowdy, and, and then we're gonna do a little bit on the Camaro, but um, really enjoy it. Really appreciate all my followers since I was kind of gone for a little while. You know, had a lot of people, hey, when's the next update, so like that, and, and um, you know, I've owned that Jeep for 30 something years, 20, uh, 30, 31, 32 years. You know, I, I, it's not going anywhere, and, uh, and I keep telling myself, it's only gonna get finished if you go down there and work on it. So anyway, glad to be back and glad to see you and uh, appreciate all the comments and appreciate all the followers. Take care and we'll see you a whole bunch more next time. Jack it up.